welcome to the course on uh, biostatistics and uh, design of experiments. We will talk about uh, chi-square distribution then chi-square test. This is very very important especially when you are looking at uh, um, data where we are talking about uh, some sort of a uh, binomial data, yes, no, um, uh, live, dead, 1, 0 and that sort of situation. Okay. Now, what is chi-square distribution? This is also a continuous distribution. Okay, just like you are normal, um, but then uh, it is somewhat related to binomial at some point, we will come to that actually. Uh, it is asymmetric and de depends on the degrees of freedom. For example, if you have very low degree of freedom, it looks like this. As the degree of freedom increases, you end up uh, slowly, slowly having okay, a skewed uh, and so on actually. Okay. So, it is used to construct confidence interval for variance, generally chi-square is used uh, for variance uh, ratios. Okay. Um, it can be used to compare a set of actual frequencies with expected. Okay. So, I expect a uh, uh, certain number of uh, um, child mortality in a village, but uh, the current data is this much, is it significant or not significant. Um, I expect uh, to have a certain number of uh, defects um, when I manufacture uh, bolts but I see so many defects in a day, um, but so is it significantly different or not, such sort of situations actually. So, it is actual frequencies versus the expected frequencies. Okay. So, it is like we are trying to fit with the theoretical distribution okay, and then check for the goodness of the fit actually. So, I, I expect a particular uh, um, sort of uh, uh, values, but I find this like I expect um, 60 to 70 percent uh, um, marks of ten, 10 students in a class and 70 to 80 of another 10 students in a class and above 90 percent another 10 students, but I find uh, different uh, numbers uh, in that range of 60 to 70, 70 to 80, 90. Now, is that really a significant difference? It also looks at association between variables in a table. We will talk about this contingency table later on actually. So, um, I make uh, some uh, uh, equipments, some parts using three or four different equipment and um, I find defects uh, in each of the equipment. So, defect, non-defect, defect, non-defect, non uh, equipment 1, equipment 2, equipment 3. Is there a relationship between the defects and the equipment? I can use a chi-square test for that. This is very, very useful uh, especially um, in clinical trials, we may be running lot of samples on uh, HPLCs and uh, some HPLCs may give very accurate result, so it is acceptable. Some HPLCs um, sometimes they give accurate, sometimes they give non-accurate which is not acceptable. So, I may have uh, um, 100 samples. Uh, injected in HPLC 1, I may have uh, say 30 uh, rejected and 70 accepted. I may have 100, 110 samples injected in uh, HPLC 2, I may have uh, 40 rejected and 70 accepted uh, and so on actually. So, is there an association between the rejects and the instrument? For that sort of situation, I can use uh, something called the chi-square distribution. Okay. So, for example, a company wishes to know if the events of defects is related to work shift. This is very common in industries, you know, uh, like in industries people work come in the morning shift like 8 a.m. Um, to uh, say 4 p.m. and then there will be second shift which could be 4 p.m. to night midnight 12 o'clock and then there could be a third shift which could be night midnight 12 o'clock right up to 8 a.m. Now, each of the each of these workers in the each of these shifts are manufacturing a particular part like bolts for example. Now, um, um, you, you find uh, some failures uh, in some shifts, some successes in some shifts, morning shift, uh, yeah, after evening shift and night shift. Now, is there an association you want to know because uh, um, it is always considered that uh, people working in the night shifts. Um, may always make mistakes, so mostly defects come in the night shifts. So, is there an association between um, the defects or the failures as against the shift that is the time in which uh, workers work. So, this type of situation also we use this 
chi-square distribution and chi-square test. So, in each of these it is very, very powerful um, for you to look at uh, chi-square type of uh, distribution. And of course, uh, as I said in biological situation, um, it is very useful because uh, you are telling uh, we expect uh, a, more, uh, a mortality of uh, say 10 percent and then uh, we find in a few villages uh, different numbers. Is it uh, significantly different? Okay. In that sort of situation, we can use uh, this type of uh, chi-square test actually. You are testing a drug, um, it shows successes, it shows failures. Okay. You are testing a placebo, it shows successes, it shows failures. Now, is there a difference between the placebo and the uh, drug or there is no difference? We use the chi-square test actually. Okay. Um, so, it is a continuous distribution and um, it gets skewed like this at very low d of it, it looks like this and as the d of keeps increasing it is slowly becoming more uniform and at very large d of you may end up having some sort of a um, nice smooth uh, uh, uniformly distributed uh, picture. Okay. So, the equation for this looks like this uh, y, uh, y naught okay, chi square value this is the probability density function. Um, this is nothing but uh, the um, degrees of freedom. Okay, so this is how this equation looks like. So y is equal to y naught. Y naught is a constant. Okay. Okay, constant that depends on the number of degrees of freedom. Chi square is the probability density function, and uh, okay, that's how you calculate it. Okay. Um, uh, so, it is generally it is positively skewed like I showed you you know positively skewed okay, generally, but as the degrees of freedom keeps increasing the distribution can be approximated to normal. Look at this, this is a 40 degrees of freedom, it looks almost like a normal uh, distribution. Okay. So, what are the uh, 20 degrees you can st still see the skewness here, okay. that is why it is generally believed that if you have 30 or more degrees of freedom um, it will approximate to a normal distribution. So, the mean of a chi-square distribution is the degree of freedom that is mu is equal to um, this value v or nu it is called actually that is the d of variance is equal to 2 times the number of uh, degrees of freedom. So, sigma square is equal to 2 d of. So, in a chi-square distribution okay, so the mean is equal to the number of degrees of freedom and the variance will be 2 times uh, that. When d f is greater than or equal to 2, the maximum value for y takes place when chi square is equal to uh, okay, new degrees of freedom minus 2. Do you understand? Um, as the degree of freedom increases, that means the maximum value okay, um, occurs for the y when chi square is equal to okay, um, d of minus 2. Imagine I have a degrees of freedom as 3, uh, so maximum value will occur at 3 minus 2, 1. Okay. Okay. As the degree of freedom increases, the chi square up curve approaches normal distribution as you can see from here. Okay. Um, so, the chi square will have a mean of uh, um, degrees of freedom, the variance uh, will be 2 times the degrees of freedom. So, we can get the cumulative probability also the total area under the curve is equal to 1 generally it is put into that and the area under the curve between 0 and chi square value is this cumulative this is the area. Okay. So, the distribution generally looks like this with a long tail because as I said it is got a positive skewness. So, this is how it looks like okay. here it rises very fast and then it falls down and then uh, it keeps on going. The, so, the if you are talking about cumulative for chi square is equal to 5, then this is the entire area, okay? this is the entire area, but the total area under this curve is equal to 1. Okay? So, it gives the probability that the value of chi square statistics will fall between 0 and 5. So, just like your uh, uh, t distribution, normal distribution, so if chi square is equal to 5, okay, the probability, uh, the area under the curve is the probability because this whole area is 1 whole probability is 1. So, this gives you the probability that your chi square will lie between 0 and 5. Do you understand? 
okay. So, chi square lying between 0 and 5 um, is given by the shaded area. If you take the whole area, the probability is 1 uh, and the area is also 1. Okay, so, just like a T table, Z table, F table, we also have a table for chi square and um, you have uh, here the degrees of freedom okay? uh, and then here we have the alpha and of course, you see as you can see two sided and one sided. So, one sided will be half of this 0 0.05 means 0 0.025. 0 0.01 two sided means 0 0.005 obvious right. Um, so, this is how it looks like. Okay. So, um, for, for different degrees of freedom, you will have two columns here. Okay. This A is the lower boundary that is on the left hand side critical value, B is the upper boundary right hand side okay, uh, on, on the right hand side and that one is upper bound. So, you see there is a lot of uh, uh, difference in the magnitude. Why is that? That is because the way the shape of the curve looks like. Okay, so if I put in here a line here, for example, and a line here for the area, because it's rising very sharply, you will have very small value, and because it is falling down very slowly, um, you will have very large value. That is why, if you look here, the A and B, you can see small number, and on the B, it's a very large number. Small number, very large number. So, like that, it goes actually. Do you understand? Okay. And uh, this uh, top one relates to two sided, bottom one relates to one sided. So, we use it for two tail test and one sided test uh, as obvious right. So, we prepare the test statistics and then we compare from both the table for the upper boundaries and the table for the lower boundaries as well. The st test statistics which we use, I will tell you what the test statistic is, is greater than the upper tail. Okay value or less than the lower tail critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. So, if I am looking at this and if my test statistics for chi square comes out to be uh, say for example, larger than 2.71, then I reject the null hypothesis okay? for 1 degree of freedom for a probability of a 2 sided 0.2, I am saying 2.71. So, for 1 degree of freedom, uh, probability 2 sided 0.05, um, the if I get more than 5.02, if my chi square calculated is more than 5.02, then I reject the null hypothesis. You understand? Same thing here 3.84 for a one sided test. Uh, if I get uh, more than uh, 3.84 when I calculate the chi square, I reject the null hypothesis. This is how you do, and uh, these, uh, this as you go down, we are having more uh, degrees of freedom coming into the picture. Okay. So, this chi square test can be used for uh, contingency tables, it can be used for comparing uh, um, two different uh, distributions, it can be used for comparing expected versus observed and so on. We will look at each one of them slightly more in detail. Uh, so, you can use chi square for a population variance. So, I have a sample variance. I I want to know whether it comes from that population. So, I have a sample n values x1, x2, x3 up to xn. So, I can calculate mean and variance okay, um, s square for this one. Now, I want to know whether this s square comes from uh, the population of uh, sigma naught. So, obviously, uh, what is the test statistics here? n minus 1 s square divided by sigma, sigma naught square. n is the number of data points. So, this is the test statistic. Okay. And then uh, we from based on the number of degrees of freedom, based on our level of test, uh, you take the appropriate table chi square value and see whether this value uh, is greater than the table value. Um, in that case, we can reject the null hypothesis saying that uh, uh, null hypothesis they come from the same uh, population uh, or alternatives they do not come from the same population. And we can use either one tail or two tail test actually. So, the null hypothesis will always be status quo, they come from the same population, that means the sample comes from the same population, alternate will be the sample does not come from the same population. Okay? Um, so, let us look at this uh, simple problem and uh, just uh, understanding. So, the null hypothesis they come sigma square is equal to sigma naught square, okay? alternate is they are not. 
uh, what is the test statistics like I said n minus 1. So, I have a sample right. So, n minus 1 s square um, s is your standard deviation okay, divided by sigma naught square. So, sigma, sigma is given by 4 okay, uh, number of data points is 17 s square is 7 okay. Uh, so, 16 uh, so this will be 16 multiplied by 4 okay, 16 into 4 uh, uh, divided by okay, sorry 16 into 7 divided by 4 16 because the number of data points is 17 okay, 16 okay, uh, into 7 divided by 4. 4 is your sigma. Um, so, six, 16 by 4 is 4, 4 into 7 is 28. Okay. So, the from the test statistics we get chi square is equal to 28. So, we have uh, 17 data points. So, 16 degrees of freedom, okay. 16 degrees of freedom is in this row and uh, we are suppose we look at uh, um, 2 sided 95 percent. Uh, that is this place okay two sided 95 percent is this place okay um, one sided 95 percent will be this place this this column so two sided 95 so we'll go here it's 28.85 okay so we calculate uh, as 28.0 see we, we accept the null hypothesis okay for a um, one sided test for a one sided test or a nine, two sided test. Okay. Suppose we take uh, yeah, 28 point. Um, suppose we take uh, the other one that is why we take a one sided test okay, instead of a two sided 95 percent then it will become 26.3 okay, here. So, we can uh, uh, reject the null hypothesis. So, if it is a two sided 95 percent it will become 28.85 uh, the test statistics is 28. So, obviously, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. If it is a one sided uh, 95 percent then your table is table is 26.3 so your test statistics is 28. So, we reject the null hypothesis okay, depending upon what uh, what is your hypothesis that is being developed. Okay, now, um, we can use this for testing the goodness of fit also. Um, so, what do we do? We look at the observed, we look at the expected. Okay. Uh, expected is your theoretical value. So, observed minus expected square divided by expected um, and sum it up. So, I have 10 data points means I do 10 summation. Observed minus expected divided by expected, here you have a square term actually. Okay. So, your uh, um, null hypothesis is equal to observed is equal to expected, alternate will be observed is not equal to expected. So, remember your uh, test statistics is compared with the crit, then the, the null hypothesis observed is equal to expected, alternate is observed is equal not equal to expected. And then after that what do you do? You go to your uh, table, okay. if your test statistics is greater than the critical value we reject the null hypothesis okay, uh, that the observed is equal to theoretical distribution. Okay. Otherwise, we accept the null hypothesis. Okay. Okay, Let us again look at a simple problem. Um, we are comparing observed frequencies against expected. So, there is an observed frequency. So, with 0 value there are 10, 1 value 27, 2. So, we can say that there are 10 students with a certain group of marks, 27 students with certain other group, 30 students with some other group of marks, 19 students with some other group, 8 students with some other group of marks, 6 students with, but we expect this. So, we want to look at the hypothesis whether they come from the same or not. So, what do we do? Observed minus expected square that is this minus this square divided by expected like that you keep on adding each one of these and okay. um, when you do that okay, we get 1.45. Now, if you go to your uh, table for uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, so 5 degrees of freedom 
we go to your table ok, we go to our table uh, for 5 degrees of freedom. So, if it is a uh, one sided we take uh, for 95 percent it is 11.07. So, we and we calculate as 1.45. So, we do not reject the null hypothesis do you understand this problem. So, here uh, what we say is observed is equal to expected that is our null hypothesis observed is not equal to expected ok that is the alternate hypothesis. So, obviously, uh, the chi square test statistics which we calculate should be greater than uh, this value. Here we are taking for 5 degrees of freedom and uh, uh, for one side and 95 percent ok. okay. Um, Excel also has uh, a function it is called chi test that is actual range comma expected range it gives you the statistics actually ok. So, let us look at this chi test thing also in Excel. So, we go to Excel. Um, so, we say 10 we will put in the data 27 we put in the data third, um, 30 then we put it as 19, 8, 6, 13.5, 27, 27, 18, 9, 5.5 uh, so we do chi d see you have this uh, chi test comma comma so it's giving out uh, actually it is giving you the probability okay 0.918 so obviously the value is very very large uh, so there is uh, no chance uh, of rejecting the null hypothesis ok and uh, that is what we get from our uh, uh, thing also here ok. So, it gives you the uh, from the statistics ok, uh, gives the statistics here ok. So, it gives you 0.91. So, there is no chance of rejecting the null hypothesis uh, from uh, this data set. Um, okay, let us look at uh, some more problems. Um, again uh, looking this is these are called contingency tables where we have expected and observed coming into picture ok. So, we will look at uh, some problems in this particular area ok. So, results of a mono hybrid cross between two uh, heterozygotes for the A gene ok. So, we are looking at it the phenotypic ratio 85 of the A type and 15 of the small A type ok. This is the ratios. In a mono hybrid cross between two heterozygotes however, we would have predicted a 3 is to 1, 3 is to 1 is nothing but 75, 25 ok. Now, we want to know whether these results are very different ok. okay. So, our uh, null hypothesis will be ok, there is no difference between these two um, observed and expected ok. So, if you remember this they are same and they are alternate is they are not the same. So, what do we do? Um, we use the same formula observed minus expected square divided by expected plus observed minus expected square divided by expected add these two. So, we end up with 5.33 ok. Uh, from the table because uh, it is 2 by 2 um, it will be 1 degree of freedom. So, we go to 1 degree of freedom ok it is 3.841 ok. So, obviously, the null hypothesis the two distributions are the same is rejected. So, we reject the null hypothesis observed is equal to expected ok. So, once you reject the null hypothesis that the observed values over cross are the same as the theoretical distribution of 3 is to 1. So, uh, generally we expect 3 is to 1, but we find a phenotypic ratio of 85 15 which is not the same. Do you understand? 
So, we can uh, again use the Excel also, okay. So, we can use the Excel also 8515 and uh, 7525. Twenty five, twenty five. So, Kai test um, actual divided by expected, we get point zero two. So, obviously, uh, p value is point zero two. So, obviously, it is statistically significant. So, if you see this from um, Kai test, we can. Um, also calculate chi test command which is available in um, excel um, we can that is this one here we can calculate uh, these particular value okay now uh, um, there is a command called chi inverse what is chi inverse we give the probability okay we give the probability say for example i give probability um, and 1 degree of freedom say okay so i need to get 3.84 as you can see here okay so it gives you this chi inverse command is almost like your table okay so chi, chi inverse command 3.84 you understand uh, at one, at a 0 0.05 um, with the 1 degree of freedom um, as you can see here 0.05 one sided uh, comma 1, 1 degree of freedom gives you 3.841. So, chi inverse is almost like your, uh, um, it gives you the table whereas, uh, this one gives you the, the chi test gives you the probability. So, in the chi test, we give the um, observed okay, and then uh, we give the expected on one side, we give the observed on the other side okay, that way, sorry, yeah expected on one side, observed on one another side. Okay. So, the actual and the expected uh, that will give you the probability whereas, the chi inverse um, given the probability and the degrees of freedom it gives you the chi square value as shown in the table like um, point I mean 3.84 for example. 3.84. So, that is uh, given in the chi inverse. Uh, so, both are very useful type of uh, um, okay. and things to have uh, when you are talking about okay. so chi distribution. Uh, okay, this is a older version for Excel 2007. So, we have chi test which uh, uh, if I give the uh, observed and expected will give me the um, probability whereas, in the chi inverse when I um, give the probability and uh, degrees of freedom it will give you the chi square value. So, both these uh, uh, excel commands are very useful also, but you can also do it uh, by simple calculator because uh, it is not very difficult for one to do. Um, the formula is very simple absorbed minus uh, expected square, absorbed minus expected square it up divided by expected okay, and then um, plus absorbed minus expected square divided by expected. So, so simple to do also, it is not very difficult for one to uh, perform this type of uh, calculations. Okay. Um, so, we will continue more of this uh, chi square distribution again in the next class also. Thank you very much.